Have you ever felt so powerful that your very existence harmed those around you? Imagine being a hollow so strong that your mere presence caused other hollows to lose their souls and die. This is the story of Coyote Stark, the Primera Espada, the most powerful Arankar in Aizen's army in Bleach. But Stark's power came at a terrible price, rushing loneliness. Let's delve into the fascinating journey of this complex character, exploring how he went from a solitary hollow to one of the series' most intriguing antagonists. Coyote Stark is not your typical villain. He is lazy, disinterested, and surprisingly compassionate for a hollow. His story is a unique blend of incredible power and deep melancholy. Let's start at the beginning. Before becoming an Arankar, Stark was an incredibly powerful hollow, so powerful that he couldn't coexist with others of his kind. Imagine the weight of that existence, being so strong that you inadvertently kill anyone who gets close to you. This forced solitude profoundly shaped Stark's personality. He developed a deep envy of the weak, not for their power, but for their ability to form connections, to travel in groups, to not be alone. It's a fascinating inversion of the typical desire for power seen in many antagonists. Stark's desperation to escape this loneliness led him to do something truly extraordinary. He split his own soul into two beings. This is how Lilinette Gingerbuck, his other half and constant companion, was born. This act not only demonstrates Stark's incredible power, but also his deep need for connection. Interestingly, after the split, neither Stark nor Lilinette remembers which one of them was the original Hollow. This adds a fascinating layer to their dynamic. They are, in essence, two halves of a whole, equally important and interdependent. The relationship between Stark and Lilinette is one of the most intriguing aspects of his character. Despite technically being the same entity, they have distinct and often conflicting personality. Lilinette is energetic and impulsive, always trying to motivate the lazy Stark. On the other hand, Stark often acts as a reluctant older brother, tolerating Lilinette's sometimes abusive behavior with surprising patience. This dynamic not only provides moments of comic relief, but also offers a window into the deep loneliness that still permeates Stark's existence. Even having created a companion from his own soul, he still longed for broader connections. It was in this state, Sosuke Aizen found Stark and Lilinette. The scene of their meeting is truly memorable. Aizen arrives to find Stark and Lilinette, sitting in front of a mountain of dead hollows. These hollows weren't killed in combat, they simply died from being near Stark's overwhelming power. Stark's reaction to Aizen's invitation to join him is revealing. He's not interested in power or conquest. All Stark wants to know is if Aizen's allies are strong, not to fight them, but in the hope that they can withstand his presence without dying. This encounter marks a crucial turning point in Stark's life. For the first time, he finds someone who can not only survive his presence, but also offer the promise of more companions. It's easy to see why Stark would become so loyal to Aizen. He offered Stark something he desperately desired. The chance not to be alone. As the Primera Espada, Stark is undeniably the most powerful Arankar in Aizen's army. However, his personality starkly contrasts with his status. He is notoriously lazy, often found sleeping or avoiding responsibilities. This casual attitude towards his own power is a fundamental part of who Stark is. It's important to note that Stark's laziness doesn't stem from arrogance or disdain. Instead, it seems to be a combination of existential boredom and a desire to avoid conflict. Stark has no interest in fighting or hurting others. He simply wants to exist peacefully with his companions. This attitude manifests in several interesting ways throughout the series. For example, when Stark is said to retrieve Orihime Inoue, he expresses his distaste for such a tactic, even while following orders. This shows that, despite his loyalty to Aizen, Stark maintains his own moral code. Stark's reluctance to fight is even more evident during the battle in the false Karakura town. When confronted by captains Shinsui Kyoraku and Jushiro Ukitake, Stark suggests that they could just pretend to be fighting and wait for the others to finish. This proposal, while obviously impractical, offers a fascinating insight into Stark's mindset. However, it would be a mistake to confuse Stark's reluctance to fight with weakness or coercion. When he finally engages in serious combat, Stark demonstrates truly formidable ability. 
His proficiency with Sonido is so great that it appears almost like teleportation. He can fire Saros with incredible precision and rapid succession. And his swordsmanship is enough to keep Shunsui Kyoraku, one of the Soul Society's most skilled swordsmen, on the defensive. The true extent of Stark's power becomes evident when he releases his Resurrección, Los Lobos. Here, we see the unique nature of the relationship between Stark and Lilinet fully manifested. Instead of wielding a traditional Zanpakuto, Stark releases Lilinet, who transforms into a pair of ornate pistols. Stark's released form is an impressive sight. With his fur jacket, tight pants, and holsters, he resembles a gunslinger from the Wild West. This unique aesthetic among the Arankar reflects Stark's singular nature and abilities. Stark's abilities in his released form are truly extraordinary. He can fire Saros from his guns without needing to charge them. And his technique Sarometraleta allows him to fire a barrage of up to a thousand Saros at once. Additionally, he can summon a pack of wolves made of spiritual energy, each capable of causing devastating explosions by biting their opponents. What makes these abilities even more impressive is the ease with which Stark uses them. He doesn't boast about his power or revel in his ability. For Stark, this immense power is simply a part of who he is, neither something to be proud of nor something to fear. However, it's during his final battle against Shunsui Kyoraku that we truly see the depth of Stark's character. As the fight intensifies and Stark witnesses the death of his fellow Espada, we see a change in him. For the first time, Stark seems truly motivated to fight not out of a desire for victory or revenge, to protect the comrades he has left. At this moment, we realize that Stark has finally found what he always desired, companions. The tragic irony is that he only realizes this when he is about to lose them. This moment of realization adds an emotional depth to the battle, elevating it beyond a mere clash of powers. Fight between Stark and Shunsui is one of the series' highlights, not just for the impressive display of skills, but also for the interaction between the two characters. There is an evident mutual respect between them, and Stark even comments on the similarities in their personality. The climax of this battle is truly thrilling. Shunsui reveals the true power of his Zanpakuto, trapping Stark in a deadly game where colors determine the damage dealt. It's fascinating to see how Stark, despite never having encountered this ability before, quickly understands its rules and adapts his strategy. However, it's the end of this battle that truly cements Stark as one of Bleach's most tragic characters. When Shunsui finally defeats him with a devastating blow, Stark's final thoughts are not of anger or regret. Instead, he remembers his first encounter with Aizen and the other Espada. In his final moments, Stark realizes that he was no longer alone. He had found companions, people who could stand by his side without being crushed by his power. This realization, coming too late to change his fate, adds a final layer of tragedy to Stark's story. Stark's death is a powerful and bittersweet moment. On one hand, it marks the end of a formidable antagonist. On the other, it includes the journey of a character who struggled with loneliness throughout his existence, only to find connection in his final moments. Coyote Stark's legacy in Bleach's narrative is significant. He represents a fascinating subversion of the typical powerful villain. His immense power does not stem from ambition or malice, but is simply an intrinsic part of who he is. And rather than seeking more power, all Stark truly desired was connection and companionship. Stark's story raises interesting questions about the nature of power and loneliness. It makes us wonder. Is supreme power worth it if it isolates us from everyone else? What kind of strength is needed not to defeat others, but to form genuine connections? Stark's journey also offers a unique perspective on the nature of Hollows and Arankar in Bleach. Traditionally depicted as creatures consumed by hunger and instinct, Stark shows that even the most powerful Hollows can have deeply human desires and emotions. Furthermore, the relationship between Stark and Lilinet adds a fascinating layer to Bleach's mythology. The idea of a being so powerful that he can split his own soul into two distinct entities is not only an intriguing concept, but also a powerful metaphor for Stark's desperate search for connection. Stark's character design also deserves mention. His Wild West gunslinger look in his released form is unique among the Arankar, 
and adds a distinctive visual element to the series. This aesthetic, combined with his gun-based abilities, creates an interesting contrast with the more traditional swordsmen in the series. Stark's final arc in the Battle of the False Karakura Town is a masterpiece of character development. We see Stark evolve from a reluctant combatant to someone determined to protect his comrade. This change is not sudden or forced, but a natural progression based on his experiences and realizations during the battle. Particularly poignant, is Stark's reaction to Baragan's death. Despite not being close, the loss of a fellow Espada clearly affects Stark. His observation that Aizen not saying a word about Baragan's death is horrible reveals much about Stark's values and his growing disillusionment with his leader. Stark's final technique, the Pack of Wolves, is a powerful metaphor for his journey 